Welcome to my channel. I've got a full slate today. In addition to the six requested reactions that I'll be doing, I've got two bonus videos for you. <laughs> it's just one of those days, I'm telling you. Uh, the first one that I have is not even a music video. It's Oliver Anthony, and the title of the video is It's About Time. And he's talking about his plans for the future and his thoughts about our nation. So we're going to listen to that. I, I just, I queued it up so that it's at a certain point in the video, which is where I want you to see it. And uh, so we're going to, we're going to do that uh, just right now. But before we do that, of course, I do have to thank you for coming here and for watching my videos and for supporting me. Uh, I've gone over 19,000 subscribers now, which is just mind boggling to me. I, I just don't understand it, but it just keeps growing every single day. It's astounding, it really is. Uh, also, I wanna remind you that I always put the artist links in the description of my videos so that you can support them as well. And also put the link to the request form so that you can request reactions if you want them. I do not take requests from the comments. So, oh, let me show you my shirt. This is similar to one I had on the other day. I don't want to. I don't have to. You can't make me. I'm retired. <laughs> this shirt my granddaughter gave to me. Uh... When I say she gave it to me, it's kind of an interesting story. She was, uh, we were down at their house and we were saying goodbye and she decided for some reason to bite me on the belly. And of course I saw her coming and I moved back and she got a hold of my shirt and bit a hole in my shirt. So of course I made mom and dad pay for the shirt and then I got it sewed up and I still wear it. <laughs> so I think of it as a shirt that she gave me. So anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay. So this is Oliver Anthony talking about his future plans and uh, what he wants to do going forward. So I, um, <laughs> I'm looking at switching my whole business over to a traveling ministry. My, my great-grandfather was a traveling minister, um, Anthony Horn. And I just kind of want to keep things in the family business moving forward. I have this, this vision for this thing that, I, that I'm calling the Rural Revival Project, and it is, it's basically just going to start as a grassroots music festival, but it, I hopefully, hopefully it grows into something that that can literally change our landscape and our culture and the way we live. And I have this vision. We're doing our first show on November 2nd and it's completely thrown together in DIY. And it's literally just some me and some buddies of mine putting something together to start with. But um, I wanna create a routing schedule that exists parallel to Nashville that circumvents the monopolies of Live Nation and Ticketmaster. And it goes into towns that haven't had music in them in a long time and it stimulates their economies it showcases their culture. It uses local vendors, local musicians. It's, we're not, you're not having to drive to Pittsburgh to some concrete amphitheater to see a show. It's done out at a farm or on a main street somewhere in a town that desperately needs the economic impact. And I'm, I want to start to network with farms who need to, farms who are struggling that need a bridge to, to connect direct to consumer. And I'd like to find a way to take consumers and, and network them direct to farms to where you don't have to feel like you have to go to the grocery store and buy shitty Tyson chicken and Smithfield stuff and food that's full of hormones and microplastics and like I want you to be able to just find a real farm where people grow real animals and you can go buy those real animals and you can put them in your freezer for a lot less than what you'd buy them for at the grocery store. And I'd like to build a, I'd like to Hey guys, J.D. Vance here. I'm in Arizona, and if you can contribute $5, $25... As we go into these towns, I want to build communities there, and I want to find all the people there who are willing to lead, and I want to empower them to be in a position to lead. And there doesn't need to be some 50-year-old corrupt lady running a town and embezzling the money out of it. 
there ought to be people there who are ex-special forces from the military and people who are in real ministry positions and 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 the people who are real, the real doctors, the real teachers, the people who really care, who really want to make a difference. I want to find a way to network those people together and empower them. And I think the way this country is fixed is not by playing their games and not by not by trying to install politicians that can be easily bought like they all have been. And it's not by it's not by trying to sue Ticketmaster and monop to be to be broken up and not become a, no a monopoly anymore. I mean, look at what happened to U.S. Standard Oil after World War II. And I mean, what is what are all these oil companies now? They're all fundamentally at their core, they are all still the same, and they're they're all still owned by a lot of the same stockholders and investors. And we just need to go back to living real life again and we don't need anybody's permission. We just need enough unity. That's the one thing that keeps us back is, is lack of real communication. Our communication now is done on Reddit message boards and on Facebook groups and, and through text messages. And we have to start getting face to face again and talking about, about real life and finding ways to circumvent all of these systems that we hate, that oppress us, that inherently oppress us. And we need to talk about the real issues within the issues that we talk about. Like when we talk about the southern border, the Republicans argue about how important it is to close the southern border, but they're labeled as a racist for closing the southern border. And the left argues about that we have to leave it open because if we don't, it's like we just hate people from South America. But the, real, the, real, the realization is, is that I've interviewed quite a few people who have worked um, with Homeland Security on the border. And most of the people who are right now who are coming across the border, a lot of the ones that they catch are actually Eastern European and they aren't from South America at all. And even South Americans who do come in this country through an open border, they're, they're, their kids are being trafficked by the cartel. They're taking all the money that they have. So they come into a country a lot of times without their kids, without any financial resources, without the ability to even get a real job. And so they are indentured servants to a system that's enabling them to come over because because our immigration is so broken it's so difficult to be to become in as a real immigrant because like every government agency it's so inefficient and it's so broken and it's so slow to get anything done that like it's like we got to talk about what's really going on with all these things that make us so angry and upset and we need to start talking about the things that really are affecting us in our day-to-day -day life. Like nobody wants to pay all this money. Nobody wants to have an inflated dollar that they have to survive on. And nobody wants to eat shitty food. And nobody wants their kids to get a subpar propaganda installed education where they don't really learn about anything real that benefits their real life or, or in introduces them in, into the real world. Just So the Rural Revival Project it is. And um, at the top of all of it, we have to focus on what our own purpose is in this life, in this time that we've been given here on earth. And um, you know, like I always say, I would never sit here and preach to you and act like my shit doesn't stink or that I'm better than anybody else or that I'm <laughs> in any way, or even that God's even proud of me or happy of me or that I've even done his will at all. It's just that, um, Fundamentally at our core, what we face is the same thing that we've always faced as human beings in this world with any government in any time and period, and that is that there is inherent good in the world and there's inherent evil in the world, and there's truth in the world and there's lies. And we're at a point where we have to decide that we want to follow truth and we want to follow what's good. And we cannot tolerate the lies anymore, and we can't tolerate the evil anymore. It's about time. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. I'll put the link in the description so you can listen to the whole thing. It's quite a bit longer than what I played for you. But um, he makes a lot of really good points. He really does. And I, I think it's fascinating that he's... Um, that he's doing this, what he calls a, a rural project. 
I forgot what he called it, Rural Restoration Project, where he's going to do, he talks earlier in, in, in the video about how he's made more money than he'll ever be able to spend in his entire life. And I know that's partly because he doesn't need a mansion in Beverly Hills. He's perfectly happy living where he is. So, uh, you know, if you maintain a similar lifestyle to what you had, then you don't need a lot of money. And he doesn't. And so what he wants to do is take his show on the road to small towns and communities to uh, stimulate their economy and to stimulate the citizens to start taking care of themselves and not depending on government. And I think that's fascinating. I think that's a fantastic goal. I hope he succeeds at it. I really do. And matter of fact, I pray that God will be with this man and watch over him and keep him safe and help him to prosper in his goal. Not for money, but to change the attitudes of people, to change the course of a nation, to change what we're doing. Because the direction we're headed is evil and corrupt and nasty and does not come to a good end. So I pray that God will take care of that for him. This is the Vietnam era vet out.